vector products involving the del operator. Our objectives for this demonstration are as follows. To define the operators del cross a vector v, del dot a vector v, del dot the quantity of del dot a vector v, and the quantity of a vector a dotted with del and that applied to a vector b. And we are going to demonstrate how to calculate these vector multiplications through examples. Some materials to review. Uh, first thing are partial derivatives. We will use partial derivatives as part of our definitions and calculations for these vector products. The del operator itself, what it means. Dot and cross products will also be used in this demonstration. And the notion of the determinant from linear algebra will also be used in this demonstration as part of definitions. The curl of a vector function. Suppose a vector function f is defined as a function p in the i direction plus a function q in the j direction plus a function r in the k direction. And this is a vector valued function in R3 and the partial derivatives of P, Q, and R all exist. Then the curl of F is defined by this quantity here that you see in the center of the screen. And this is often shortened by the use of the determinant notation given below at the bottom of the screen. Some additional notes and including a couple theorems. If a function f of three variables has a continuous second order partial derivative then the curl of the gradient of f is equal to zero and this can be uh, proven directly by using the determinant formula and Clairaut's theorem. In physics this equates to f being what's known as a conservative vector field and this leads us to define another theorem. If f is a vector field defined on all of R3 whose component functions have continuous partial derivatives and the curl of f is equal to zero, then f is a conservative vector field. The reason for the name curl is that the curl vector is associated with rotations. Suppose we have a fluid and f represents the velocity field of fluid flow. If the curl of F is equal to zero at a point in the field, then the flow is called irrotational at the point. There will be no whirlpool or eddy as it's commonly called at this particular point labeled P. Our first example of computing the curl of a vector field is given here. Suppose that F is a vector valued function given here and we're going to find the curl of this vector field and we're going to interpret the results. So here we have our function and we're going to compute the curl. That is the del cross f operation. We compute the curl via the determinant and here we can see the expansion of the determinant in this operation and we see that the result of this operation del cross f, the curl of f, is zero. And this is true for any value of x, y, and z in the domain of R3. And that implies that F is a conservative vector field. So we can expect to see no rotations at any points in this field. The divergence of a vector function. If F is equal to a function p in the i direction, a function q in the j direction, and a function r in the k direction, is a vector valued function on R3 and the first partial derivatives exist specifically the partial of P with respect to X the partial of Q with respect to Y and the partial of R with respect to Z if they all exist then the divergence of F is the function of all three variables defined by this formula so here we have del dot F and it is simply equal to the sum of the partial derivatives explained in the definition. Here we have an example of how to compute the divergence of a vector field. 
So suppose f is the given uh, vector valued function here, and this represents the velocity of a fluid. Suppose the divergence is what we're after, and we're going to interpret the results as well. So we compute the divergence via this dot product notation, which essentially is dotting the derivative operator in the respective direction with the components in those directions. So here we have the partial of the i component with respect to x plus the partial of the j component with respect to y and the partial of the k component with respect to z. We take those derivatives and we simplify and we end up with y minus z as the result of the uh, operation and this is the divergence of this vector field. Since the divergence is not identically zero, this fluid would be compressible by definition. If the divergence does equal zero, then the fluid is known as incompressible. And that is our interpretation of these results. Some uh, additional theorems here. Uh, if F is a vector field on R3, and PQR, the components of F, have continuous second order partial derivatives, then the divergence of the curl of the vector function F is zero. In other words, we have the div curl is zero, or that the del dot, the operation del cross F, it will be equal to zero under these conditions. And this is proven by direct computation. So in fluids, if the divergence is equal to zero, the fluid is known as incompressible. The reason being that divergence is a measure of the rate of change of the mass of the fluid flowing from the point per unit volume. If this rate of change is zero, then the fluid does not diverge from the point, so it would be incompressible. The last operator to discuss is known as the Laplacian, and it is defined below. It is simply del dot the gradient of f, and this leads us to the Laplacian operator, which is seen very commonly in advanced mathematics and physics. And it is often abbreviated as del squared f. Suppose that f is equal to the product of x, y, and z, and we find the Laplacian of f. This is a direct calculation. And here we have, again, by definition, the gradient of f as equal to the partial of the function f with respect to x in the i direction, the partial of the function f with respect to y in the j direction, and the partial of f with respect to z in the k direction. We take those first derivatives and we get our result on the line below it. And then we dot that result with the del operator again, which by definition is to take the derivative operator and apply it to those components. So again, we take the derivative of yz with respect to x plus the derivative of xz with respect to y and the derivative of xy with respect to z and we end up with zero. So we can do it directly by just applying the gradient to f and then taking the uh, del dot operator to that result or we can simply take the second derivative of f with respect to each of the variables and sum them up and either way the result would be zero. We may also apply the Laplacian to a vector function and it appears as the Laplacian of p in the i direction plus the Laplacian of q in the j direction plus the Laplacian of r in the k direction and this is of course if f is a vector function with p in the i direction q in the j direction and r in the k direction. Now we come to a vector a dot del as an operator applied to another vector function b. In physics 
When using vector quantities, the operator f dot del can also arise. Do not be fooled by this notation. We know that dot products are commutative, but that is with the dot product of two vectors, not the dot product of a vector and an operator. The del is an operator, so the order cannot be switched in this case. In other words, f dot del is not to be interpreted or is not equal to del dot f. So it's not the divergence. Due to the enormous amount of questions that stem from this notation, we shall define this new symbol on the next slide. And to note that the upcoming notation, uh, a with the subscript of l, uh, means the l component of the vector function a. Here is the definition of this particular operator. So here we have the i component of a times the partial derivative of the i component of b with respect to x plus the j component of a multiplying the partial derivative of the i component of b with respect to y plus the k component of a multiplying the partial derivative of the i component of b with respect to z and the sum of those three quantities make up the i component of the resulting vector and this process is repeated for the j vector and the k vector respectively as you can see here on the slide and this is the definition of this operator so just for an example to see this in action, suppose that a is equal to xy in the i direction, plus yz in the j direction, plus z in the k direction, and b is equal to y in the i direction, z in the j direction, and x in the k direction. Let us determine what a dot del applied to b would look like. The formula requires we compute the partial derivatives of the b vector function. So we shall do this first. And this will ease up the calculations for us a little bit when we go to plug it into the actual formula. So we take the partial derivatives of each of the vector components with respect to each of the variables. So we'll have nine partial derivatives to evaluate. The partial derivative of the i component of b with respect to x the partial derivative of the i component of b with respect to y. The i component of b will be differentiated with respect to z as well. And we simply do those derivatives. And then we move on to the j component, repeat that process, move on to the k component, and repeat the process again of taking each partial derivative required. After we have computed all those partial derivatives, we plug them into the formula the i component of a times the partial derivative with respect to x of the i component of b. And we continue along this process by plugging the results in. We get the results of each component for this new vector. And you can see the details here on the slide. And our final result is yz in the i direction plus z in the j direction plus xy in the k direction is the result of applying a dot del to the b vector function. Thank you for your time and attention.